Oh, there we go. Okay, welcome everybody to Training Tuesday. This is what is today, the 14th. Is today the 14th? I think today yes. is the 14th. Today yes. is the 14th. I am Peg Wilson with the Sunflower Crew. So today we are going to talk about vendor events and I apologize that you cannot see my video, but I'm gonna be doing lots of screen sharing. So um, hopefully this will be interactive. Um, how many of you do vendor events? Do any of you do? I know Barbie Sue just did one. I do. Yeah, and Melissa, you do them. Okay, so yeah. the first thing, the first thing on the agenda is how we get vendor events. So how are you guys going about finding vendor events? That's a hard part. There, <laughs> there's there's postings. Um, there's a link on Facebook that you can go on. And sometimes, not often, you can find them because since he is so known that everybody, it seems like everybody sells it because it's hard to find that spot. If you get in yeah. there, you're lucky to get a spot on, on the vendor. But that's how um, I do it. There's a, a link to Facebook. Okay. So oh, what if, if you're, you do you just search on vendor events? Yes. Yes. And then, you know, there's times, then you kind of know, you know, like, okay, there's Oktoberfest is coming up. I wonder if they have a vendor. Uh, I know uh, Christmas is coming, you know, do our church is going to do, you know, vendors. And, you know, you just kind of uh, have to search for them too. You have to do it your own because right. there's, there's a North Cat, uh, Cathedral that, you know, that does it. But you have to be there. You know, you have to be there at the right time, right place when, right. They, when those things are posted. Absolutely. And then that really is the big part of it. A big part of it is just getting referrals. I mean, getting your name out there and, you know, telling your customers that you want to do vendor events. I mean, that is a big part of it is telling people that you want to do vendor events and getting those referrals. Melissa, how about you? How do you go about finding yours? Uh, um, usually I just find them on, um, Facebook. People will post like looking for vendors for this event. The last one I did was out in Bates city and it was their first time doing it. And, uh, I'm in like all those community pages out here. There's like the Oak Grove grain Valley and people will post saying that they're having vendor events. And then I just always comment, like, do you have a Cincy consultant? And most of the time, like Berlinda said, they already do, but some of the yeah. times they don't. <laughs> <laughs> right, right. And that's it. I mean, you know, right now, the, our company is growing so big that it is kind of hard. I've got, um, I got a really good network of people. I make friends with other vendors uh, when I'm at vendor events and get referrals from them. So that's really nice too. You know, if they get, they go to an event, I've, I've already, you know, reached out when I'm at an event and say, Hey, do you need any other vendors? You know, who are you looking for? Oh, I'm looking for color street. And I'll reach out to five friends that I have who do color street and say, you know, Hey, they need a vendor at this event. And then they'll do the same for me. So referrals is also a really good way. And there are a lot of places that you can go uh, or just online. I know like in New Jersey, I can do, I can search on New Jersey, you know, South Jersey vendor events and Barbie, man, if you're willing to travel, North Jersey has tons of them. Like North Jersey is always looking for vendors out that, out that way. So there are tons and tons of them out there, but if you just search on the internet and search for vendor events and, you know, your local churches and communities and all, you know, I mean, there's lots of ways to find it. So now the next I thing on the agenda, oh, sorry. Can go I ahead, go ahead. I know that Barbie is new at this, but I will, I have seen lately people scamming, um, saying that yeah. they're doing a vendor event and then they have all these people send them money because they think they're going to do the event. And then really the person who put, made the need vendors is actually a scammer. I actually just seen one the other day, this lady took all these, this money from all these vendors and then it was just a scammer. She wasn't even a person having an event. Yeah, I've seen them too. Um, I've seen it where people, uh, they actually take a legitimate um, vendor event that's happening mm -hmm. and change the information to send the money to them. And then when the people show up at the event, you know, they haven't been paid for, the person has no registration information from them because they sent the money to somebody who is a scammer and doesn't exist. So you do kind yeah. of have to be careful. You know, I mean, I try to deal with, um, I do have this one lady who does local events. Um, she's called Downtown Vendors. And um, she's very particular about the, the vendors that she lets in, but she does things where she goes into businesses 
um, like she goes into um, around here, it's like a hospital pen medicine. And she goes into pen medicine and like brings vendors, you know, most of those are in the afternoon. So I can't do those, but she does bring in vendors there. And, um, you know, the people, when they take their lunch, they can come down and shop and stuff. So it's nice to get hooked up with somebody who does stuff like that, who is a, an event coordinator. So keep your eye out for things like that too. Okay. So now you get a vendor event. So now let's talk about how we prepare for the vendor events. Uh, what are some of the first things that you need to check when, when you're, when you're doing a vendor event, what are a couple of the first things you need to know? Talk, even though we're not supposed to have stock, but you know, have some bars, uh, a couple of warmers, uh, light bulbs on hand and, um, Okay, so uh, not even your not even your stock though, not even your stock, Berlinda. Back no. up, back up a little bit. So, That's what about when you're preparing? Like when you were, so you registered for this event. What are some of the first questions that you're going to ask about the vendor event? Like, what are the things that you need to know so that you know okay. how to prepare? So things like the size of the space that you're going to have, whether you need to bring a table. Whether, you know, like I've, I've been to some of them where they provide a table and a tablecloth. You know, you need to know whether it's inside or outside, whether you have to bring a tent. You know, what the rules are about, um, you know, things that you're allowed to have. Are there rules around, you know, how much space you're allowed to have? You know, so, I mean, they're the kind of things that, um, that you need to ask up front. Uh, I just lost. Linda, you're muted. Yeah, I'm just going to share something and it clicked off on me. Dagnab it. Oh, there we go. Oh, no. Man, oh, man. I, my computer is just, I don't know, something's going wacky with my computer. It really is like, it's really acting up. I'm not really sure what's going on. So I'm not sure uh, what I'm going to have for you to share or not. <laughs> so, all right. So, but let, so a couple of the things are like, you know, asking you know, what, whether you have to bring a tablecloth or any uh, special requirements. Like I have, I've had some of them that say you have to have a tablecloth that covers a floor. You have to keep all of your boxes underneath, you know, whether it's inside, outside, is it rain or shine? Is there a rain date on it? Um, do you need to have a tent? If you do have a tent, do you, is your space a 10 by 10? Is your space a 12 by 12? You don't want to show up with a 12 by 12 tent when you've got a 10 by 10 space. So making sure that you have the, the proper supplies um, to know what's expected there. What time can you check in? What time do you do, um, you know, do your, your setup? So the event starts at 10 o'clock. Are they starting to check people in at 7 a.m.? Are they checking people in at 8 a.m.? Do you have two, three hours to prepare? Some of us don't need that. You know, you won't necessarily need that bigger events. You will. And you don't have, I mean, the biggest thing, and these are some of the things that I'm going to, going to show you, um, that you don't have to have tons of stock to do an event. The whole purpose of you doing these events is really to make contacts. You know, yeah, you want to sell some of the stock that you've got because that's what's going to bring the people over. You want to have things to show them, but you don't have to have a ton of stuff to do an event. I did my first event with my kit. Like literally I showed up with my testers and some books and, you know, the warmer that I got in my kit, I had on my own personal warmer and a couple of bars of wax. I didn't really have anything to sell. So I just showed up with stuff that I was going to, that I was just going to share with people and get some contacts. And I did, I actually, I actually booked a party from there. So, so that worked good, you know, but there's different ways that you can do your setup. Um, you can do simple setups, you can do more complex. So I'm going to do some screen sharing here and I'm going to show you some setups um let me see so can you see my screen yes okay that's what you right. posted on facebook yep that's yeah. my facebook post okay so here we go um i'm on a mac so you know bear with me okay so this is what some of the examples so this is a simple setup so you can see this is very simple and she's using her tester. She's got some samples to give out to people. That's what these little scrungies are. So it looks like she's got some bath soak samples. She's got a couple of flowers. So we'll go ahead. Can you scroll down? We yeah, we I can only see like the Cincy banner. You can only see the Cincy, the Cincy banner. banner. And Mickey. Oh, wait a minute, hold it. You guys are seeing something different than I'm seeing. What are you looking at? It says it's your post. It says Peg Wilson and then top then topic vendor events, but we can't see the full okay, picture wait a of your that's, setup. That's not what you're supposed to be seeing. Huh? 
that's not what you're supposed to be saying. Let me see. So let me, I'm closing that screen. Okay. Let's try sharing screen again. All right, are you seeing oh, this no. now? Oh, oh yeah, yeah. Okay. I see it. Yeah, there's, okay. yeah. There we go. All right, <laughs> is that better? Are you seeing now the screen with the little kitty cat, the flowers? Yes. Yeah. yeah. Okay, all right. So this girl now has a simple setup so that you're there, you can see she has her testers. She has some oils over there and a diffuser. It looks like these little scrungy things here are that she has some bath soak samples. And then over on the other side, a couple flowers maybe to sell and some of the cleaning products. So this is an example of a simple setup for somebody who really doesn't have a lot of products to be able to share. Um, you know, with people. So, um, you know, that's just an example of, so, you know, some of the things. So let me see if I could figure out how to switch to the next picture because this is, this is complicated. I need to get you guys out of the way so that I could see what I'm doing. Oh, I honestly, technology is just not my friend. Mine either. Oh, I'm, I'm like awful at this. Okay, this is my simple setup. Uh, computer, I am not good at that. I am so not computer savvy. And when it comes to like doing stuff like this, I am just like, like I went into this, there we go, we're in the finder. I'm like, what the heck? Can you see, see that still? Yeah, it's a yeah, simple the same setup. Picture. No. Yep. Okay, so here's the, here's the next one. So you can see now here, she's at an outside event. She's got no. a tent set up. No, we don't say oh. anything. You're not seeing this, right? It's no, the same, the same simple one. setup. Okay. How's that? No, still simple setup. Now? There's nothing. No share. Damn. <laughs> okay. Here we go. I'm going to, I guess I'm going to have to reshare it each time. Okay. Can you see that now? Yes. Yeah. Okay. All right. So this is an example of an outside one where obviously she's got a little bit more room. And you can see she didn't have room for um, her wax. So what she did is she put her wax on the ground. You know, that I don't recommend. Um, you know, your wax on the ground, because most people, when they come over, that's what they're going to want to do. They want to smell your wax. And having your wax on the ground is probably not the best thing to do. She either needed another little table or she needed to, you know, maybe not have all these little fancy displays. But this is still a nice setup. You know, a third table to make it into a U instead of an L. But the things that she's got displayed, you can see it's kind of a little bit of everything. And she did try and layer a little bit. So that layering really makes a difference too. You know, that um, that makes it so, um, did, I, did you guys flip off the screen now? Okay. We can, can still see the picture. It. Can you see the next picture? No. Okay, so I'm gonna have to just no, keep- It's set up number two. Okay, so here we go. And now here's setup number three. Can you see that now? Yes. Okay, so there you go. That's another simple one. Looks like this is set up, you know, outside her house or maybe like a little block party. You know, it's fair. That one's fairly simple as well. Um, so let me go to the next one. And I have to, uh, let's close this one. I'm going to have to do the share screen every single time. Sorry, guys. Okay, so now you can see this one. This is another fairly simple setup. She's got, you know, her bars are in these little, little containers here. She did some layering here to display things. She's got her little flag on. She's got her, her um, you know, her logo out here. And then she's talking about um, online orders, you know, cash or e-transfer. So she's telling people the way that she takes payments, which is really nice. Okay, so let's see if I could switch. To, are you guys seeing the next picture or no? Yeah, yeah, yes. that worked. Woohoo, it worked this time. All right. So again, this is another simple setup. Um, you know, you can see she's got the flag. So this is, you know, I like the way she's using this little cabinet here, but she's using the box to like elevate her warmers and her, um, and her diffuser. Can you see that one now? Uh -huh. Yeah. Okay. So again, another simple setup here. Um, you know, she's using the box, the, the boxes. Can you see these right here? These mm -hmm. display boxes you can get from Sensi. So that's a nice way to display your room sprays and your hand soaps. 
She doesn't have a whole lot of product there, but she's got a lot of brochures there. So it looks like she has a lot of stuff to give out to her customers. Okay, so then this is back to the other simple setup one. So, okay, so now there's a couple of other things I wanna talk about. Okay, so some of these are a little bit more complicated. Hold on, we're gonna go back. Okay, so now this one. Okay, what is it that you notice about this one right away? It's messy. Exactly, it is messy. Would you want to walk into there and go shopping? No. That is a hot mess. You know, first off, like the table, now it looks like maybe the tablecloths, they provided those tablecloths in there, but there's nothing here that says Scentsy. There's nothing that brings people in that says Scentsy. There's bags all over the floor. You can see the boxes underneath the table here, like the tablecloth's not even pulled down. Back here, you can see the boxes. It looks like she's got buddies in this little cart over here. You know, it's covering her sign. You know, it ju it's just a messy, messy setup. So, I mean, these are some of the bad examples. So you can see, same thing here. That doesn't bring you in at all. The tablecloth is completely crooked. You know, it just, it's not inviting. So, you know, some of the things really are making it inviting for your customers to come in. Now, this one here, this is a nice little display. Now, you can't really tell from this picture, but this is a bag. So she's got this clear plastic bag there and she's talking about my borrow bag. So you can join Sensi for free when you borrow my bag and you host a party. And she's showing them that there's all testers in there. So this is a nice, a nice way to talk to people about hosting parties and about joining that kind of opens up the door for that. So that's a nice way to do that, to kind of get people interested in, in the door. This girl used the Sensi Club little postcard and she's got a whiff box there. Again, this opens the conversation to people. People are going to look at it and go, oh, what's a whiff box? Mm -hmm. So then you can have that conversation with them about that. This is really, really important. The enter my drawing by doing something where you're entering some, you know, having them enter some kind of drawing, you're getting their contact information. I tell people that their email address is re required to enter the drawing. And that is so that I can add them to my newsletter. So this way, even if they don't buy at that time, maybe next time they're going to get the newsletter and they're going to see something that they're interested in. So I always have a drawing slip. And what I do with mine is regardless of how many events I'm having in a month, I tell them that I'm doing a drawing at the end of every month. I draw for a warmer. And generally what I do is I either choose the warmer of the month. If I haven't sold the warmer of the month, I use that or I choose another warmer. And depending upon how many events I've done that month, it's whether I do a full size warmer or I do a mini warmer. You know, but I tell people I decide at the end of the month what I have left in my stock and then I chance it off. But most people are just anxious to, hey, yeah, sure, I'm going to join. So you see this person's got the drawing box there. Now, the drawing box is something that's that is a matter of choice. I personally do not use a drawing box. And if I do have a drawing box, I put it behind me or up high where they can't reach it so that they have to hand me their slip. And when they hand me their slip. I have a conversation with them and I usually write on their slip, like I'll write, uh, you know, lady with a baby, you know, wearing a red dress. And we talked about, you know, her son's name is, and she was interested in, you know, cause I always strike up conversation that I think is really the most important thing about doing vendor events is strike being able to strike up conversation with people. You have to be personable. You have to be approachable. Um, my sister and I did a big event this weekend and part the biggest part probably of that was the two of us kind of tag team off of each other. Now, I don't recommend you necessarily use my line, but as people walk by, I'll say, come on over and give us a sniff, you know, so it gets people laughing and, you know, they'll look at you like you're crazy. And then my sister will go, sister, the way we've been sweating all day, don't be telling people to give you a sniff. You'll chase them away, you know, but we do this kind of banner back and forth where we like, you know, we, we tease and, and go back and forth, but it gets people to come into our booth, it gets people to laugh, they'll come over, you know, and I'll be like, you know, did you see, did you see the latest warmer, you know, happy hauntings and, you know, uh, so it, it's, it's a matter of getting people into your booth. If you're just sit there at your table, they're just going to walk on by, you know, you're going to have those people who know Sensi, who are interested in Sensi, but I literally, after I leave these vendor events, my feet kill me, my back kills me because I don't sit down. I don't sit down the whole time. I'm engaging people as they're walking by. Nobody walks by without, you know, if they've got a baby, I compliment their baby. I compliment, you know, their hairstyle. I'll compliment their, their shoes, what they're wearing. If they've got a dog, we're out there petting dogs, you know, and then you strike a, a conversation about how we have dog products. 
So it's a matter of getting people over to your table. Like that's the first hurdle. If you're going to sit behind the table and you're going to be super quiet, you know, and not engage people and not say anything, they're going to stroll on by. You know, you know yourself, you know, think of it. You go, you go to a, a vendor event and you're walking by, you know, a wreath booth. You are going to peek at the wreaths and you're going to keep on walking by. But if you're walking by the wreath booth and the lady's there and she says, oh, hi, how are you? Are you having a great day? You're going to stop and have a conversation with her. And then you're going to feel bad. You're going to walk into the booth. Right. And you're going to look at everything. You know, yeah, but people weren't doing that. They weren't doing uh, it. Abby. Abby and I were saying, oh, good morning. How are you? And people yeah. were like, eh. like they didn't, they wouldn't even look at us. <laughs> it was yeah. just, I mean, even Michelle, the tastefully simple lady was like, this is so weird. And, and honestly, I, I, it must be because of COVID. I mean, it has to be because of COVID. I mean, the Apple Fest, uh, we had people like, like it got to the point at times where I couldn't manage all the traffic. You Maybe know, but it was an outdoor event. Too. Yeah, Maybe. that's it. It was an outdoor event. Some people wore masks, some people didn't. But this, the event that you were at, first off, it was an indoor event and it's geared towards, you know, people who are pregnant or have young kids. Right. So, you know, I mean, in years past, I've always had success at that event. So I think it was just a fluke. You know, I'm sorry that it happened that way, but I think it was just a fluke. But okay, all right, I'm gonna move on to some more of the pictures. And these are just to show you examples. Sal, now this one is a really elaborate display. Yeah. Now, this person must have themselves a big old truck that they can get giant cabinets. You know, they I don't know how the heck they do this, but it's very neat, it's very presentable, it's very welcoming, except how are they getting back there to look at those warmers? Yeah, really, right? You know, I mean, there's no way that they're getting back there to look at them. So the person can stand behind that table, but it's not very welcoming. So I always recommend that you do something like in an L shape or a U shape. You know, the standing behind your table is like nice, but it's got to be inviting. You want to welcome people in to your space. So here's, you know, an elaborate, this is the rack system. You know, if you're somebody who does tons of events, I'm sure like Ruth does tons of events. I'm sure Ruth has stuff like this. Not necessary, but it's just an idea. So this is somebody who did a vendor event who had tons of space. But do you see what she did with the warmers? They're all, all, sitting, all sitting in the boxes. How's anybody know what they look like? Well, aren't there some of them on the right hand side? Right, on the very end, you can see that right. she's got a couple of them on a display, but the rest of them are just sitting on a rack. Huh. So here's, so here's one that's a great idea. This is just a regular ladder. And this person put slats of wood in between the ladder. And you can see that they have these, can you see in here, they have these little lips to like hold it in the ladder, but this will fold up and travel. If you, I mean, you have to have a truck obviously for a ladder that big, but you know, that's just an idea of some of the display ways you can use. So now this person here, they used crates. Crates are a great way to layer, great way to display. I don't know yeah, if I would pile mine as high as she has here with the sign. That would make me a little nervous, but, <laughs> but it is nice the way that she's piled things and she's used the boxes so she doesn't have to carry a lot of extra supplies. She did a nice way of keeping your eye moving. So think of it that way too. When you're doing your display, you want to keep people's eyes moving. All this little signage here is really nice that she's able to have these little signs to direct people to like what things cost, you know, joining her team. She's got her little light bulbs up here, you know, so all of that is like, you know, it's welcoming. Like that's something you see that display and you're like, wow, this person's a professional. I want to go over there. And here's another one. So this again, these are the displays that you can buy at Sensi, the little cardboard displays. This person's got three of them. And then she's using crates to elevate. So the crates are also a really nice way. Now this one's an outdoor event. So I can, I would understand why she doesn't have like the buddies and stuff like that out. You can see she's got one of them displayed. So when people want to see them, that's a good, you know, that's a good way to like show them. This person here has again, another pretty elaborate rack system, but she's got all the warmers out displayed in front of the boxes, which makes it a little bit more welcoming and easy for people to see. This is a huge display. I wouldn't want to be having to set all that up, but, but that's one of those ones that you can kind of like screw together. 
Now this one, the reason I put this one in here is do you see what she did? She actually put the shelving unit on top of her table. Now I've done that where I bought a, a portable picnic bench. I actually have a picnic bench that like folds in half and the legs fold in and it's six foot long. So I bring that and put it on top of my table sometimes to give me layering. So this is nice. So see what this person did? Roll the dice, the odds are, the odds are in your favor. You roll a dice and you win something. I don't know if I'd be giving away all that stuff, but it's a cute idea. It's something to like roll. See, I would do like roll the dice when somebody is, um, is purchasing something and maybe give them a discount, you know, off of their next purchase or something like that. Give them Scentsy cash. So I made some coupons, you know, for mine where I give them Scentsy cash. Um, there, there are rules. This I would like to, to recommend everybody read within your consultant agreement. There are rules about in-person events and temporary events. You can only attend things that are temporary. You can't set up a permanent, like you can't go into somebody's store and have this set up as a permanent display. But this is another one. So these are those racks that fold up and this is a nice way to display your stuff. There is a Facebook page out there for Sensi vendor events. So now this one, I wanted to note this because you see the way she has this table set up. She's got the tent set up where she has all the sides down. So everything's closed in but you actually walk into the tent. She's got a nice big sign back there letting you know who she is. And you walk into the tent, so you're actually walking into her space. And where her table is, that's where she's taking her orders and doing the, doing the drawings. The rest of the products are all displayed around it. Hmm. So these are our simple displays. Okay, so now this one here, does anybody know what that is? That is one of those little blow up, um, I, you can put ice in it. So they do it for like, if you're having like an outside event and you blow it up and you put your, your drinks in it, your beers and stuff like this. This person is doing an outside event probably in hot weather. So what they do is this blow up thing and you can get them off of Amazon. She put ice in the bottom of it and then she puts her wax in the plastic containers and it sits on top of the ice. Hmm. So she probably has to I change out the ice. It's, um, it's also really good. So, you know, the packs that come with, with, with your wax bars in the summer, save yeah. those packs. And if you have an event, throw a bunch of those in the freezer and use them, you know, to do something like this. So then you're not dealing with the water of the ice and the, the, um, the wax can just sit on top. But the event that I did this weekend, it really wasn't very hot, but it was hot enough that I had some of my bars that started to drip. So. Yeah, again, I did. My, I had that at my last event that I did. I have a little tub looking thing like that. Yeah, yeah, it's really great. And she did a real nice job of layering the warmers in the back as well. Okay, so now here's a pretty, this is quite an extensive wax collection, but I wow. have seen it done like this where now some people hang them, other people sit them on the table. You sit them on the table, people go over and you, they can see exactly how many of each bar you have. This, this is a pretty big, wax display most of us don't have that much wax so here are uh, these uh, these i believe what these are are actually like silverware containers but look how perfectly they fit the wax and she she's able to stack them on top so they're nice ways so now has anybody um gotten themselves a display you have one berlinda i have one yes okay I bought one off of former consultant. You have one, Melissa. My brother-in-law made no, me. No, I, I had a, I had a friend made mine, make mine. Yeah, and that's why I yeah. wanted to show this. This one is pretty cool, and like, look at the inside of it. So you see how neat that is. If you have anybody who can do any kind of construction and woodwork, that that's a really nice display. The one that I have has like. Um three things that I can sit like big warmers on top and then right. it has four plugins across the front where I can plug in the little ones. Yeah, mine has, uh, mine has two high rise and then like dips down in the middle so I could do three big warmers and then I have yeah. four plugs across the bottom and then two plugs up on the two high risers. So I can do yeah. six mini warmers and three large warmers on mine. And then mine has, um, in the back mine has two plugs. 
in the back as well so that I can plug stuff. So here is um, somebody else who has the table display and you can see she's got the racks back there. So they're really nice risers where she's able to do large warmers and small warmers. And she made use of the floor as well to put some of her stuff on the floor. You just wanna make sure that people are able to move. Now, the event that I did this weekend, um, I was supposed to be inside and I was told I only had an eight foot space. So I get there and I'm outside. She says, don't worry about it. I put you under a shady tree where there's electricity. And I'm like, great. So I have one six foot table and I had a spinny rack where I have like one of those racks that um, I actually bought off of the store. So it spins around and it's got the little hooks on it, but it's like a mm -hmm. six foot tower. So I put all my wax on that. And um, that's all I had was the table and the wax. Now I don't have enough room to put my stuff. So I had a clear <laughs> container. I put a tablecloth over the clear container and draped it along the ground. And that's where I put all my buddies. Best thing I could have done because there were tons of kids there and the buddies were down on their eye level. I told, I sold 12 buddies. So that was, uh, that was pretty good, but it was, I'm sure I sold those buddies because they were down on their eye level. So that is, I'm going to stop sharing. That is it for my pictures of some of the things that we are, and hold on, I'm going to open one more thing here. So now, so we talked about how to prepare for things. Now, what about um, payments? So what kind of payments do you take when you're doing yours? I do cash and um, um, square. Okay. So that's something that is, you have to think of that. You have to make sure you're prepared and that you have change with you. Um, I can't tell you how many times I've been to a vendor event and somebody that is at the event didn't have enough change and they're scrambling around at the last minute because they're trying to take payments from people and they don't have change to take payments. So that's a really important part to make sure that you're prepared is making sure that you have a way to take, you know, take payments from people, make sure that you have enough change. Um, so uh, one other thing that I recommend is if you're somebody who uses um, like Venmo or Cash App or anything like that, you could print out your QR code and just have that piece of paper at the table with your QR code. So it makes it easy for people to scan. I had um, people this time either paid by credit card and I did Cash App or did um, Square or they, um, they paid cash. So, and you know, there's also the thought too. So you can charge whatever you want when you're at a vendor event. You don't have to charge Sensi's prices. You know, I mean, I don't recommend you charge more than Sensi's prices, but you can charge less. You can choose whether you want to do tax, whether you want to do shipping. I don't. When I go to my events, I just, that's the advantages of you buying it there. So when people come up to me and they ask how much the bars are, I say they're the regular price. They're $6 each. Or if you buy five, you get one free. So it's six for 30. And they say, oh, that's the regular price. And I go, yeah, but if you buy it here right now, you're not paying tax and shipping. So if they have another consultant, that's kind of my, you know, my bring them in to buy from me that particular day. I do that also. Yeah, you do that as well. Yeah, so I just that's want to keep it an even price. Usually, I just don't want to deal with tax. <laughs> right, I don't want to deal with change. I don't want to deal with change. Yeah, that's how. You know, and if I if yeah. I do tax, I mean, you know, it's just easier to calculate things, and you know, I mean, you're losing a little bit of money on it, but your purpose there is to get contacts. Now, I can't. I mean, I you guys don't have video now, but I literally have a stack of drawing slips from all the contacts that I have, and it's not. You know, collecting the information is one thing, but you have to follow up with those people. So all the people that you meet there, make sure that you have join packets with you. You want to have information if anybody's interested in the opportunity. I had a few people who filled out the drawing slip and said they were interested in the opportunity. So I made sure that I took some time to talk to them about how they can make extra money with, you know, with Sensi and um, I gave them an opportunity packet and I got their information. So I'll be following up with them. I followed up with two people already that said they wanted to do fundraisers. So I'm hoping they'll get some fundraisers for October. And I mean, that's really important part too, is making sure that you follow up with them. You know, it's, and that's only part of it is you're there to make contacts and make contacts with the other vendors too. So I've gone around to the other vendors and said, I've walked when I'm going to get food. I carry business cards with me and I carry a stack of my drawing slips 
and I'll go walk down to the other vendors and I go, oh, here, fill out the drawing slip, feel free to stop by my booth and drop it off before the end of the day. You know, and I'll give them my business card. So, you know, get yourself a little network going and it's, you know, we're all supporting each other. I go to the other booths, I buy things off of them. You know, they'll come down and buy stuff off of us. And, you know, so make sure that you're doing that as well. Any other tips that anybody has that I haven't covered? And welcome, Casey. We saw you pop in. Anybody it's Casey, have any hello. other tips? It's Casey. Hi. I have a comment, Peg. Um, when you were showing, and I might, you may have shared it already, but when you were sharing the pictures on like the way people stack their things, I mm -hmm. bought um, plastic like dog steps off of Amazon yes. and I used those to help stack warmers on those as well. Okay, that's great. That's that is great. Idea. And there is a group on Facebook that's called Vendor Display Sensi Consultants Only where you can see some ideas out there. Like some okay. people do like a little drawing wheel. As a matter of fact, you know what? Let me share my screen here. Can you guys see that? Yes. Yeah. Okay. So this is somebody, you know, that created a wheel and they said they wanted advice and look at this one. Somebody had, had this made. Book a party, spin and win. So somebody books a party with you, they spin the wheel and they win a prize. And, you know, generally I would just bring it with me to the party. I wouldn't give it to them until they actually had the party, but that's where I got a lot of these pictures from. So this is vendor, vendor displays dash Sensi consultants only. But if you do, if you search on vendor, there are see vendor booth display ideas, vendors needed, vendor and craft events, sensational vendor booths and displays. So this, this one I go to quite a bit too. So that's another one, make sure you join. And there's, you know, there's different ideas that are out here. This girl's showing you how she makes her little brochures. Make sure you have something to hand out to people. Um, you know, do you guys do like, you know, just your business cards? I actually have, again, I can't, I can't show you because you can't see me, but, <laughs> but I have, um, I get the product brochures and I fold them up and I created my own Sensi Cash. And it's a $5 bill with my picture on it. And it says, get $5 off your next purchase of 15. So I'll give it to people who are filling out the drawing slip and aren't buying that day that I don't let them use it that day. But I tell them the next time that they purchase, they can use it. So I hand those out to everybody and I hand them out like they're candy. You know, it's like the best thing ever that you're getting. What do you guys do um, for handouts? I usually Oh, go ahead. I'm sorry. No, nope. go ahead, Berlin. That's okay. Go ahead. No, I just hand out the um, product sheet that has my card on it. And then even um, if they don't hand the, the card, I have the label on the, the product sheet. And depending on if they buy anything, I usually give them samples, the uh, scent of the month, and just everything that I could think of, you know, um when you know when they buy uh i put I in you know the joint broker. see you, melissa hi yeah see you melissa have a good one so go ahead casey what is it that you hand out can you hear us casey You're muted if you can hear us. Okay, Casey can't hear us. Okay, so I, I also make the, um, I make the wax samples on the felt and attach them to my, to my money too. And, you know, and I mean, generally I do whatever the scent of the month is, or I'll do like, you know, if it's something that's like kind of an in-between where I don't have time to prepare, it's always just like, I do some of our most popular ones I buy in bricks. Like I'll do, do a Luna or black raspberry vanilla or coconut lemongrass, you know, I'll do some of the popular ones, but it's a matter of getting them. And I mean, so when you talk to people, this is something that, you know, it's funny because now I, I laugh because my sister parrots me 
So when people come over, what is, how do you open your conversation with people? And, and I'll let you guys, you know, just like, tell me how you open your conversations. So Belinda, go ahead, you go first. When, whenever I see, you know, people coming, you know, I don't sit, that's another thing. It's not professional to sit behind your table or, you know, and then I, I go up front and I talk to the people, you know, to encourage them, you know, to come over and, you know, hi, how you doing? Have you ever heard of Cincy before? And a lot of people say, oh yes. And I told them, so why, how you doing on your wax? You need any light bulbs? And then um, they, st I just start talking to them, you know, yeah. Uh, what fragrance, you know, uh, do you like? And mine are, and what, if they say whatever, and I tell them, I said, well, you know what? I says, mine are set up uh, uh, alphabetical. So if you like Luna, you know, I could just, you could go right there and get your, your Luna out. I said, and then they would ask me sometime, well, you know, what, what's a good one for cinnamon? Or what's good, you know, for such and such? You got to know your product too. Yes. Very important to know your product. Very important. You know, how about you, Casey? How do you open your conversations? My conversations start with, sorry, I don't know what button I pushed earlier to not hear you. <laughs> um, my conversations start with, again, like I don't hide behind the table either. And I'm a big introvert too. So it's taken a while for me to get myself out there. Um, <laughs> But I will say, hi to everybody, same as Berlinda. Have you heard of Scentsy before? And let them know what specials that we have going on. We'll sometimes do our own personal little special. Like we had an event this weekend on 9-11. So we did an 11% discount. Nice. Um, so we tell them about what um, discounts we're doing just the small talk on, you know, do you have any favorite scents? Do you have any, you know, and if they have a favorite scent, oh, have you heard that we have laundry products or the different type of products that come in that scent? Um, just the things like that. See if there's any, if they haven't heard of Scentsy before, then I'll be like, oh, well, are there certain type of scents that you do like that we could help you find? Okay. Um, so, you know what, so Casey, if somebody comes over to you, so I'm walking up to your booth and I've okay. never heard of Sensi, and you say, you know, have you heard of Sensi? And I say, no, I haven't. Why don't you tell me about it? So how would you open that conversation? I start out by saying, I will let them know first. I'm like, oh, great. You know, like, let me tell you about it. And so then I will let them know that we are, you know, big on the wax and warmers, but we are so much more than that. And let them know that we have, you know, the laundry products, the all the different types of the products that we do have and how much more safe are even our wax and warmers are than having a candle in your house and how all of our products are, you know, mainly the safe things. Um, if there's any, ask them to, you know, like, are there any products that you would like to try that I've mentioned? Just okay. Okay, okay. How about you, Barbie? So how, how are you opening your conversations with the um, few people you've had the opportunity to open with? <laughs> I didn't really have anybody to open with. I mean Okay, so so then let's do let's do a quick little role play. Okay. So okay. you're coming to my booth, okay? Yeah, I see you coming to booth and I say, uh, hey, how are you? I love your shirt. Hot pink's one of my favorite colors. How you doing? Are you Good, familiar how are with you? Are you familiar with Scentsy? I am. I love to hear that that's music to my ears. So do you have a consultant that you work with? I do. You do? Okay. Well, um, have you seen the latest? Has she shown you the Harvest catalog? You know, the Harvest collection was just released. Have you seen it yet? I did. And I really wanted one of those enchanted pumpkins and they're sold out. Oh my God, aren't they beautiful? I, I'll they tell are. you, that's one of, that was one of my favorite. You know, it sold out twice last year and both times I bought it for myself and I felt so bad because people wanted it and I gave it away. So this year I was determined to get one for myself and keep it. So now I'm hoarding my Enchanted Pumpkin. Would you like to see some of the other stuff that's out? I know you have a consultant, so I don't want to pressure you into buying anything and cheating on your consultant. But if you need some instant gratification, feel free to buy and I won't rat you out. So that, I mean, you mean you won't tell my niece? <laughs> so that's kind of the way that I sort of bridge the gap when somebody tells me 
that they've already got a consultant. And then I'll say to, you know, I might chime in there and say, well, thank you very much for supporting small business. We're a sisterhood. We work together. And I'm so glad that you're supporting one of my sensi sisters or misters. You know, so I, I put it out there. I thank them. I try to take the pressure off of them. You know, and it's funny because um, one of one of my really good friends who's a director, three of her customers came up to, you know, came up. And when I said, who's your consultant? Because I've been in about six years. I know a lot of people. Who's your consultant? And all three of them said the same person. They're like, you better not tell her. I was like, I will not tell her. And I said, you don't have to fill out the drawing slip. I won't know your name. You can just get your wax fix and be on your way. You know. <laughs> So it is, it is funny. Like some people are like, Oh my God, please don't tell her I'm cheating on her. You know, but I try to, I try to bridge that gap because I really, I don't want them, you know, making me their consultant. I'm not trying to talk you into making me your consultant. I'm, I appreciate the fact that you are supporting another consultant. So, okay. So now let's do a role play where you haven't, you haven't heard of Sensi. So uh, Casey, go ahead. Let's go with you. So Casey, you come up to my booth. And I say, hey, how are you? I love your glasses. I just bought a new pair of glasses too. See mine? Mine have all sparkles on them. I love sparkles, you know? Oh, so wow. um, are you familiar with Sensi? I'm not. I have never heard of them before. Oh, well, let me tell you all about it. My favorite thing to do is to int introduce people to my company. I love this so much. I was a customer for a couple of years and then finally bit the bullet and started selling to feed my addiction. But I will warn you, it's highly addictive. So are you ready? Do you want to hear about it? You know, I would love to. So, okay. So we are a home fragrance company. Our signature products are our wax and warmers. And what sets us apart from other wax and warmers is we use a low wattage light bulb and our wax is made of a paraffin base and it's infused with essential oils. So the paraffin just acts as a carrier for it. So unlike candles, when you're using them, we're no wick, no flame. It's the low wattage light bulb is just like having a lamp. You don't go around unplugging your lamp, so I can leave these plugged in all the time. And then our wax doesn't dissipate. So you know when you're using a candle, and you guys can't see me, but I use my hands a lot when I talk. But uh, you know, you when you're using a candle, how it starts to go down, and that wax, those chemicals are going somewhere in your environment. Well, the paraffin isn't doing that. What it's doing is as it slowly warms, it's releasing the oils, and oils last a lot longer. So our fragrance lasts longer than some of the other products that are on the market. I challenge you to try ours compared to the other ones, because I promise you, you'll get a lot, a lot longer lasting fragrance out of ours because of it. I said, but the real key is that our wax has to be changed. So when it stops smelling, you're just going to be left with wax, which some people sit and play in it with their fingers and they do a little manicure because it's the stuff that they used to use on women to do manicures, dip your fingers in it, you can peel it off. It's kind of fun to play with. Don't tell your kids that. Don't tell your husband that because they'll be sitting playing in your wax. <laughs> You know, so I always try and like add a little bit of humor and try and, you know, get them involved in the conversation. Then I'll talk to them about how to change their wax. And I say, but in addition to that, we've got products for pets. We've got products for, for um, your laundry. We've got cleaning products, stuff for your kids. I said, we, we really um, try to try to be very well-rounded and appeal to everyone in the family. So my job is to try and make the world smell better one house at a time. And I'm hoping I could start with yours. So do you have any questions? What can I show you? I do have a question. So I have dogs. Are your wax safe for dogs? Absolutely. All of our stuff is made. We use, we use very, very few chemicals in ours. We try and keep it as natural as we possibly can. And we have an entire line of dog products. So everything that they do, they make for, it's safe for kids, pets, and husbands too. <laughs> So, you know, I'm really big with like adding a little bit of humor in it. And you weren't on here at first when we were talking about trial to get people into your booth. Mm -hmm. So I, this time I went with my sister, you, Terry used to be my, my, my partner. And we would do this banner thing like back and forth and like people would be walking by and I see them turn around and look and I go, come on over, give us a sniff. And I'll do it sort of like that sly, you know, like, you know, especially if it's a man and like, they'll always chuckle. And my sister, you know, this time we were in a hot way, it was hot. We were outside, it was hot. And she'd be like, sister, you've been sweating all day long. Do not ask people to come over and sniff you. They are going to run away, you know? So like we were doing that, you know, cracking up back and forth. And I will, I will not sniff me. I'm back here behind, I'm behind all this fabulous wax. They can't smell my stink. All this stuff <laughs> smells so good. So, you know, it gets people, you know, just 
involved in your conversation and engaging, you know, so you have to find something about them. We compliment people's hair, we compliment their clothes, you know, their babies. Oh, can I see your baby? Oh, can I pet your puppy? You know, this was an outdoor event. So there were lots of dogs there, lots of people with coaches and, you know, and I got, I will, I will always ask, if it's okay to pet their dog, because we did actually have a couple people there who had service dogs and said, actually, no, it's not okay that you pet the dog. It's a service dog in training. And I said, oh, absolutely understand, you know, and then I'll engage them in a conversation about that. So it's, it's, it, it's a delicate balance of giving them information, but also asking a lot of questions. You want to get them talking to you. You don't want to just throw up on them, which I'm guilty of lots of times. I could talk all day long, you know, so, so it's a delicate balance of engaging them in the conversation and finding some common ground, you know, by the time they leave, you want them to feel like they're your friend, you know, and some people you can do that with, but not everybody. Some people are downright ignorant, you know, and, and so what's your response and I'll allow uh, Casey and Berlinda, you guys can, can give uh, me a Barbie. Tell us what you say when people go, I'm allergic to fragrance. I always just tell them that's okay. I understand. Okay. How about you, Berlinda? What's your response? I I think I would kind of joke around with us. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> 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 I'm sorry. I'm sorry for you. I don't, you don't know what you're missing, but you know, this is, then I'll start talk, talking about it. And I just, I would just, I would just talk with them. I don't know. I would just, it all depends on that individual person. Mm -hmm. If I look, if they look like, you know, you could say something to them. Right. That won't hurt the feelings. Right. Or, you know, or, you know, that they've got a serious face, you know, you know, you might not want to, you know, stand too close or. Right. Like you've got some of those people that is just, it's their excuse to walk by, you know, oh no, sorry, I'm allergic yeah. to fragrance and they keep going. Okay, well, I'm sorry. Yeah, well, I'll say to people, you know, well, are you allergic or are you sensitive? Because if you're sensitive, we do have some fragrances that are made for people, you know, with sensitive noses. Then I always bring out Just Breathe. So people who have asthma and who have allergies, and then I tell them both my husband and my daughter are allergic to everything. They are allergic to literally everything. And they, I switched from candles to Scentsy because it helped with their allergies. You know, and then... Um, I had a couple people this weekend and I say, well, you know, we have an air purifier. So that's a great way to introduce the air purifier for somebody who says that they're allergic to everything. Well, you know, we can clean your air. We can clean your air and provide fragrance at the same time that we're cleaning your air. So that's a good way to, to bridge the gap and open that up as well. So what I you? thought was funny is that I was using just water in the diffuser. Uh -huh. And there were people walking by saying, saying how good it I'm smells. To, I'm allergic to fragrance, holding their breath and running by. And I was just like, it's just water. <laughs> well, you know, what's funny when people say that I have literally, I've, I have engaged with some people and I say to them, you can't possibly allergic, be allergic to fragrance. You're allergic to allergens that are in the air, but you can't be allergic to fragrance. Everything in your world has fragrance. The grass smells, the trees smell, the flowers smell, your carpet smells, your furniture smells, your food smells. You're not allergic to fragrance. It's impossible to be allergic to fragrance. You can be allergic to the ingredients that is in something. You can be allergic to lavender. Right. You know, you could be allergic to pollen. Yeah. You could be allergic to grass, but you're not allergic to all fragrance. If you were, you'd be living in a bubble. Yeah. And, you know, like you said, you know, they're just there. That's just an excuse. Yeah. And that's why, you know, they'll get defensive. And then, you know, about, well, how do you know I'm not? And, you know, it just, it's best yeah. to kind of just stay, Both you know. Them, it's just, you let them, let them walk by. Just let them, you, let, you know, like, okay, well, you know, you have a good day and enjoy that show or the yeah. event or whatever. But no, they, I don't want. And then when they talk about um, oh candles, and I try to get, let them know about the R's and compare the candles, and they'll you know try to argue with you about it. And like, I just like, why do I get these people that want so? 
wants to, you know, argue with me and give their, you know, and that's fine for the, I said, that's, that's fine. That's your opinion. I'm just telling you what I, I'm selling here. And, you know, and I felt like I would then stay with your candles, you know, but <laughs> you can't, you know, you just can't, but, you know, but yeah, there's, I, I try to just agree with them yeah. so they won't, um, so they you know, won't you know, argue with me. I went to a vendor event and I had, um, it was when Terry was, was when you guys have all met Terry. So when Terry was brand new, um, I go to this vendor event with her to help her out. And it was at a bar. So um, things were getting a little bit slow. And I said, they were, okay, walk around the bar and give everybody your product sheets with your information, you know, and hand them a drawing slip and tell them they could fill this out. You know, maybe that'll bring them over to your table. So Terry's like, all right. So she goes around the bar and is literally, and she, I, you know, she, I see her stop and she's engaging people in conversation and everything. Well, she comes back to me and she says, okay. So this man over here, um, he's really giving me a hard time. And he's like asking me all these questions and did it and all this stuff. And he's, and he's arguing with her about Walmart wax, about how Walmart wax is better. And I mean, this guy was, you know, when we were done, he was just doing it to razz her, but he was real. And I said, send them over to me. So she says to him, you know, look, I'm fairly new at this. Why don't you go over and talk to my sponsor? You know, she's been doing this a lot longer and maybe you can talk to you. So this big giant cowboy looking guy comes over, marching over to the table. And he's now going to argue with me about Walmart wax. So he says to me, Hal, well, you know, why would I spend $6 on your wax when I can go to Walmart and I get it for $2? And I said, well, because mine's going to last you three times as long as your $2 Walmart wax. I said, look, Walmart wax smells great but it smells great for about two hours. And then you're going to have to change your wax. You're not going to smell it. And he goes, well, maybe I'm coming home from work at seven o'clock and I only need to smell it for two hours. And I said, well, that's, that's absolutely fine. And I said, but then you're going to have to change the wax. I said, where mine, you're going to smell it for two hours. You could turn it off and you could turn it back on for the next five days and still smell it for that two hours. You know, so I'm going to go nose to nose with this guy. Cause he's not, he was trying to be intimidating. So I'm, I was just bound and determined. I was going to go nose to nose with him. So he's like, well, then for the Walmart wax, I mean, but then I could buy, I could buy three bars for the same price that I'm going to pay for one of your bars. And I said, but again, we go back to ours is going to last a lot longer. And I said, and mine's better for the environment. He says, well, maybe I don't care about the environment. I said, so you'd rather breathe in the chemicals. And I said, if you'd rather breathe in the chemicals, that's up to you, but I'm just providing you with a safe alternative. That's going to give you something better for you to, you to breathe with. And he goes, well, maybe I don't want to be safe either. And I said, well, then you should definitely switch from Walmart wax to candles. And I said, then you could burn your house down, you know, and, you, and you'll still get your fragrance. So then the guy started laughing and he goes, no, really, I'm just razzing you. So, so what can I get? The guy wound up leaving by the, Terry came back what, and I'm what, packing up two warmers for him and six bars of wax. And she goes, help. She thought I was a genius because I did this, but it wasn't that I was a genius or I said anything. The guy was just going to try and razz us and get us rattled and I didn't rattle I went back and forth with him about it so then he was just like he started laughing and he goes all right touche touche and he goes all right so I, I want to get that warmer and I want to get that warmer and you know so tell me about your wax you know and and he actually had heard of Sensi before he was just trying to give us a hard time but you know it was the fact that he didn't rattle me and I went back to him a little bit you know but I, I mean I had no qualms in saying him, well you know what good then you should switch the candles then maybe you'll burn your house down too while you're enjoying your scent you know and that's what did it for him. It made him chuckle, you know, but yeah. But I was you could, yeah, you could, you know, read the people, yeah. you know, who you can, you know, mess with or, you know, they're giving you a hard time, you know, they're joking or, you know, you could joke, you know, right back right. with them. But there's some, you know, that's, oh, some of them are tough, they're just yeah. great. I mean, straight, you know, they got their blinders on and, you know, and they're, you know, determined, you know, like, no, 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 no. And I'm like, okay, thank you. Yeah. And, and I've, I've already been at a vendor event where they put a pink zebra directly across from me. They put pink zebra, you know, and I've been at vendor events where I'm right next to a candle person, you know, and here I am telling them that we're a safe alternative to candles when I'm sitting right next to the candle lady. And I'm saying to people, look, I love candles sometimes for the ambiance, but on a regular basis, I don't use them every day. I don't use them daily. You know, if I were sitting around a tub, I'd like to have a nice little candle and a glass of wine, you know, in a dark room. That's really nice. But other than that, you know, I don't use the candles, but I, I don't throw my candles out because I've already been in a situation where I lost all my electric and I didn't have any candles because I switched over to Sensi. <laughs> 
you know, so I mean, it is too. And I mean, it's, and, and it's funny because the pink zebra lady, pink zebra lady came, lady came over and she's like, so I hear you talking to all these people about your wax. And like, she was really interested in our products, you know, and I listened to her too. I listened to what she had to say about her products. I'm not dogging on anybody who is trying to make a living doing a small business. So, you know, it's all, it's all love. That's, that's yep. what it was, you know, it's, it's, you don't want to do that. No, no. I dog, mean, that's it. Dog, we're uh, we're their, small their, business their, owners and that's the way you have product. to think of it. Right. You're a small mm -hmm. business owner and so are they. You know, but most of the time, like when we leave the vendor events, I've made friends with yeah, half of the fun. other vendors that are there chit chat with one another. And I mean, this vendor event, God, we were so busy. They literally, they, they clocked in 3000 people on the first day. It was busy. They said it was 900 cars. Wow. And they were counting the people, 3000 people. So it was, it was really, really busy. Uh, it was the first time I had done at this particular location. So I'll be hoping to go back there again. I mean, I literally sold them. Um, I think we sold $1,200 the first day and it was $1,400 the second day. So I ran out of everything the first day. I had, to, I had to come back and like empty my garage and bring everything that I had. I was say, I I was some of the stuff with Barbie because Barbie was doing it. I, I, I gave her some. I was out of everything. Yeah, I was wondering, you know, if you could run out of everything. Yeah, yeah well, I, I, Barbie had some of my wax and she had some of my warmers. So I, the stuff that I sold, I mean, I went home with, literally, I went home with, I had five empty boxes. So, and two empty containers of wax. So, I mean, we, we sold a lot. I sold them um, probably about, a, it was probably about 200 bars of wax I sold. That's great. Yeah. So it was good. It was, it was a good event. And I was, I was supposed to do it by myself. So I was very thankful that my sister came with me because it would have been, uh, would have been a little bit crazy, you know? Yeah. But the, you know those purple bags that we that uh, uh Cincy Cincy sells those three three in a package those yeah. purple big bags. Yep. Now there's times you know I come home with two of them folded up. Yeah. And I'm like, oh thank God! I <laughs> says you know I got rid of you know some you know it is like because packing up is the worst part of it. Stuff. I swear. <laughs> when you've especially like when you've done a long event like that. And then you have to pack up at the end, man, does it seem so much harder to pack that stuff up. So you always hope you do well. So you have less to pack up. It just, because it's, it's after, you know, a long day of standing on your feet and engaging people that now you've got to pack up. That's, that's the hardest part, but I definitely always recommend you take somebody with you. You know, it's so much, it's so much better when you have somebody you can tag team, you know, and, and one thing too, that we didn't talk about, make sure you have bags to put the stuff in. Oh yeah. You know, always make sure that you have bags and supplies that, you know, that you need, like have your order forms, have your payment methods, have your bags to bag things up. You know, when I just use the bags, I buy them right from Sensi. I just use the plastic bags from Sensi. And I buy the ones with the logo because what's also nice is when you're at a vendor event and you put the stuff in a bag with a logo and people are walking around and they see in a clear bag with the Sensi logo, they can see what they bought. You want them to go, oh, yeah. where's the Sensi lady? Yeah, that's that's what he's where's the Sensi lady? Yeah. Yeah, it's funny. My mom said that. My mom came to the event. She said, when we first walked in, I said to somebody, Where's the Sensi lady? And they were like, Oh, she's right down there under the tree. And she goes, They knew right where you were. I said, Well, they could smell us through the whole place. <laughs> and I love when somebody goes by and said, Oh my God, what do you have warm? And I could smell it. I'm like, I don't have anything warm, and it's just all this wax. They're like, does your house smell like this? Yes, it does every day. <laughs> so, all right, well, I am going to let everybody go. Thank you all for joining. This um, meeting has been recorded. So um, I will get it and I will put it up on the YouTube channel and you can watch yourselves talk over and over without seeing my face. Okay. <laughs> all right, Bye. have a good night, everybody. Bye. Good night. Bye. Thanks, Peg.